Everything is pastel. Mm, everything is pastel. It's like a painting. Mm -hmm. Everybody is on a picnic blanket. There's a pond. Everybody has umbrellas. Mm -hmm. It's the feeling of everybody has everything they need. These people that are on the picnic, what do they look like? They look like people from the 18th century, mm -hmm. wearing dress long Victorian dresses, mm -hmm. with the petticoats, with the bot, with their way the the petticoat makes it look like their butts are kind of sticking out, mm -hmm. the way the dresses come down. Mm -hmm. And as you look at this scene, what does the observer look like? I'm floating. Mm, very good. So let's see. How far up you float? I'm in the clouds observing, mm -hmm. looking down at the scene of people enjoying their life, and it gives me the feeling of a place of peace of where everybody has everything they need, mm -hmm. everything they want. It's peace. It's like heaven. It's where we should all be. Very good. So let's see what happens next. Where do you go to next? Tell me everything that happens. I'm still floating. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to drift and float until the next appropriate scene. The most appropriate scene. I am a woman sitting in a large regal wooden chair with gemstones on it. Mm -hmm. I have a purple dress on with gold coins that are lining it around the neck and around the arms and around the base of the dress. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in this chair. Behind me I see a, a big stained glass window with many different colors. What do you look like? I have brown hair, long, tan skin. But I'm, I'm just sitting there and I see behind me just this big round stained glass window huge, maybe 15, 20 feet. It feels like I'm in a cathedral or a place where I sit to gain energy. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what this place is. Zoom out a little bit and let's see. As you observe yourself, what is this place? You will know. It feels like people come to see me. Mm -hmm. And it's like a place of console. They come, I share. I share information of how to care. Mm -hmm. To take care of themselves. So I'd like for you to allow yourself to see one of those moments when someone is coming to you for counsel. Be there now. There's a man. Mm -hmm. Just talking to me. He looks like a, a farmer type of a man. The boots, the pants. He has the brown, a white shirt with like a brown leathery vest. Asking me about gardening. Mm -hmm. What do you tell him? To love the garden, to talk to the garden. To tell the garden how much it is appreciated and loved. What does he say back? 
he's thankful. Mm -hmm. And then he just seems to walk away. Very good. How does that make you feel? It feels purposive and it, it warms my heart and joy that I'm able to share information that is helping others. Very but, good. But that, that it's not that I share the information, but it, it's, it's not like I am a god or something. It's just, I'm just like him. I'm like a human. But I just have the wisdom. So there's nothing more special to me than this man. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out a little bit more about you. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's go to another scene in that same lifetime that gives you more information about who you are and how you gain this wisdom. Be there now. Where are you? I feel like I'm in a pastel planet that has the sky is like peachy orange. The buildings are like the white selenite that I'm holding. Mm -hmm. There's one really large cathedral and I'm sort of floating up and I'm coming down to this planet, mm -hmm. it feels like, and yeah. it feels like it's a rainbow planet. And I feel like this is my home. This is where I came from. So let's find out a little bit about this planet. Tell me more. It makes me feel good. I feel like my heart can sing here. I feel like I'm somebody not rules the rainbow planet, but somehow com counsels it mm -hmm. or helps to perpetuate the pea. That's it. Mm -hmm. So let's find out even more. How do you do that? Just by being and showing by example. Mm -hmm. In this place, are you male or female? Female. Female. What do you look like when you're at this planet? I have that purple robe mm -hmm. dress on with the gold coins, and I have the long brown hair, the tan skin, kind of like a goldeny angelic type of a face. Mm -hmm. What name do you go by in this planet? What do they call you? Arya. Arya. Mm -hmm. When I say the name Arya, does that resonate with you? It does. Mm -hmm. So Arya, let's find out a little bit more about you. Do you live on this planet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you reside in a particular place? I live in that big chapel, the big white selenite looking mm. chapel. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe I'm the queen of it. Mm -hmm. And this is why people come to me to help with the peace. You will know it in your heart. <sighs> Go deep within and you will know the answer. Are you the queen of this planet? Yes. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Tell me more. This is why I care so much about planet Earth. <laughs> I was asked to come here. You were asked to come here. Let's find out. And I said yes, Let's because I knew I could mm -hmm. give the love to this beautiful planet Earth. But I, it's hard to be here. <sighs> Let's find out who asked you to be here. I'd like for you to go to that time when you were asked. Source. Mm -hmm. Make your connection with Source and let's find out what happened.
I heard about planet Earth mm-hmm. and what was the mutiny or the how the Anunnaki's came and it needed help and so because I come from the rainbow planet of love I knew my people would be okay without me so that I could come here and share this purple golden love Mm -hmm. information wisdom now before you come to planet earth I'd like for you to see the challenges that were before you what were the challenges that you would be faced with when you came to planet earth what was the biggest challenge alone being alone no one to share (sighs) my purple gold love light (laughs) did you choose to be alone I do like being alone Mm -hmm. but I do like to know that we are connected Mm -hmm. and loved and provided for so why did you choose that challenge Because I know I could handle it. Mm -hmm. So let's find out the next challenge that you knew you would have before coming to planet Earth. What is that? That I'd have a hard time discovering what was the mission that I was supposed to do. And why would be? Why would that be difficult? Why did you set that challenge up for yourself? As a test. Hmm. Why would this queen of the rainbow planet need such a test? Maybe she needed to be humbled mm-hmm. once again. Perhaps she <laughs> Maybe she got a little ego in her purple golden robe and mm-hmm. her beautiful rainbow planet. Perhaps mm-hmm. that's why mm-hmm. she wanted to leave and come and be humbled. Well, let's find out for sure. I'd like for you to leave all of your assumptions behind and just know what is the reason why you came here to forget your mission. So I can realize how beautiful remembering is. Mm -hmm. Very good. And now that you remember, what can you use these beautiful, beautiful powers for? To help awaken others. Mm -hmm. To provide peace. Happiness. But most importantly, it's the awakening in themselves knowing who they are was this mission given to yourself by yourself or from source this awakening where you're part of the decision making Or did Source tell you to waken others? Source. Mm -hmm. So you were given this mission? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with it. I was happy with it. I just forgot when I came here. Mm -hmm. (sighs) So let's find out what other challenges you set yourself up to do on planet Earth. To 
to experience a lot of what humans have to experience here, the heartache, so that I can understand what they are feeling, Mm -hmm. so that I can assist with themselves, that's it. Mm -hmm. Came here to remember so that I can help. And the only way to help is by experiencing it? (sighs) Precisely. If you do not experience it, you would not have any empathy for others, would you? No. Mm-hmm. I can't, you can't, you can't read it. You can't read a book on that. Mm-hmm. For some reason you can't. Maybe some people can, but I couldn't. So let's find out if there are any souls that you chose in order to experience these things with. Did anybody come into this lifetime? to experience that. Were there any contracts that were made? To experience my awakening? Mm -hmm. The experiencing the pain. Let's find out. All of the pain of being human. Were there any others that agree to this? Or did you leave that open? I'm confused by the question. Mm. If you knew that you were going to experience the pain of being human, did you choose any with you to experience that pain Mm, with? I understand now. Mm -hmm. No. I don't want other people to have to feel the pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm here. This is why I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. This is why people don't have to suffer. This is why I want to share my art and the wisdom. This is why I came to planet Earth. People do not have to suffer. It's the suffering. I had to have experienced the suffering. Mm -hmm. So that I can understand so that I could share how to not suffer, share the ways how we do not have to suffer. That's why I have to suffer. Mm -hmm. And why? Why would you choose this lifetime to be about the healing arts? Why that? Because it helped me to gain understanding of how to care for the human body. Mm And you choose for that human body to be sick in order to experience? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a human body before? Yes. Tell me more about that. I see glimpses of many different images of I see myself as a man on top of the Himalayas meditating. Mm -hmm. And I see myself floating like a bird. In the jungles, flying the earth. I see myself as a Native American walking the land. Mm -hmm. It seems that in all of those lifetimes, there was some wisdom. Yes, I collect the wisdom of all the lifetimes that I've been here. Mm -hmm. This is why I didn't want to have children. I didn't need to have procreating from me. There's enough already. Mm -hmm. I came here just to share the wisdom Mm -hmm. and the love. So how else have you set up this lifetime to help others? I set it up so that people can heal through color, Mm -hmm. through light, through love. Anything else? Their happiness. 
when they awaken, it's the happiness that they will feel. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this awakening. Why is it that you were sent here to planet Earth at this time? What is this happening? What's this awakening all about? I see a goal, a white light, selenite white light coming down. I'm in space mm -hmm. and I'm all the way back and I see this massive white light coming down. And then I see it's like many universes. It's like star systems swirling around in a circle. And I am on the outskirts and I have my white robe that I'm wearing. I have the golden hair, golden butt, and I see like a kitty on my shoulder. Mm. <laughs> my baby kitty girl that passed. Mm -hmm. And we are here watching, waiting for Earth to wake up to join with the rest of the universe. Why has it taken Earth so long to wake up? It was scared. What scared Earth? It didn't seem like it would belong mm -hmm. with the rest of the oneness universe. It seemed frightened mm -hmm. and perhaps... Did something frighten Earth? Yes, it, the, the beings that are taking over it, the 1%, mm -hmm. the, the Anunnaki, the dark, the, the people that don't want spiritualism awakening to happen. Mm. So did you know about this before coming in? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how could you make a difference on Earth? Being here and existing. Mm -hmm. Contributing to with my art. with the wisdom that I get to share with people when they come to me. Mm -hmm. The same as you did in the Rainbow Planet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is this wisdom innate in you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do you tap into this wisdom? My solar plexus. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out if there's any other souls in her life that are here on purpose for her. My mother was my sister. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Let's see that lifetime as her sister. I see her. We're in the rainbow planet. We're in our pastel rainbow planet. We're in the meadow. We're holding hands. When you see yourself, how old do you see yourself as? We yeah. seem like we're 10, 12, 13 mm -hmm. young girls in little dresses, little white dresses, happy. So as you look at this soul, your sister, let's find out what agreement you made. What did you agree to when you came to planet Earth? What do you know? We came here to challenge each other. Mm. <laughs> Tell me more. Challenge each other to awaken. <gasps> oh. To awaken to who we really are. Mm -hmm. 
And why is it that these two souls have been split apart? Why are they so far from each other, unable to be with each other? Because we were so close mm. when we were sisters in the rainbow planet. And we knew it would be okay that we could handle being so far apart and that we knew that we would come back together at some point. Mm -hmm. And on this planet Earth, it seems that this soul, this soul Fermi, shines brightly, just like on the rainbow planet. Why is it that so many others have turned from her? have not felt good about her bright light. They don't know they have it in themselves. Mm -hmm. And they get jealous and they want to take it from her. And she's just trying to show them that they have it themselves. This is why I want to create art for them so they too can see the beauty in themselves. That they don't have to be mean to people and others or to themselves. Do you think this will work? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what, how can we best cheer on Fermi when dealing with these that are not appreciating her light? She has to just remember that she's connected. Mm -hmm. And this is who she truly is. And that it's okay that people aren't ready to wake up mm -hmm. and to see their own light. Does she need to dim her own light? No. She's done dimming her light. Mm -hmm. She's fully on purpose now? Yes. Mm -hmm. So she says that she likes to use marijuana in order to enhance her state. Why is she using this? Why does she need to use it? It brings her right to herself and source. Mm -hmm. It makes her feel like she's back in the rainbow planet mm -hmm. where everything is at peace. Everybody's happy. Everybody has everything they need. It's like Switzerland, mm -hmm. where there's no homeless and where everybody has everything they need. The energy in Switzerland is like, <gasps> it's almost like heaven, but the darkness is encroaching on it now. Mm -hmm. So why did she not choose Switzerland? Why did she choose Maui instead? Because my sister's in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So both of them have equal parts in this awakening? Yes. Mm -hmm. In different parts of the world? Yes. So if they were together, they wouldn't be able to do what they need to do. It seems that exactly this is why we haven't been pushed together. Mm -hmm. Even my astrology chart says that uh, my existence pushes my mother away from me. Mm -hmm. That explains it. It's all about the light. Oh, my. Wow. She needs to be there. She needs to help Switzerland, but she has to heal herself mm -hmm. first. So what's holding her back? Her sadness. Mm -hmm. She feels bad of what she did. She just doesn't know that it was, it's all a soul contract and we all chose. So how can Fermi help her with that? She's helping. She's slowly awakening her mother. Mm -hmm. It's just taking time and Fermi on his impatient sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now she says that she was drawn to the Course of Miracles for eight years. And then she, was, she discovered it was developed by the alphabet companies from mind control. She would like to have some clarity as to why she was attracted to this course of miracles.
If this alphabet agency created it, what does she have to learn from it? To read, be to read between the lines. Mm -hmm. There was some valuable information there that did help you. And I knew Ken, the teacher. Somehow we maybe, yeah, we were friends. We, at some point in the life. Mm -hmm. So she needed that connection? I needed to connect with him one more time and to know mm -hmm. that we are connected. Is, we are he, is, is he also from the rainbow planet? Mm. Or elsewhere? He's elsewhere. Okay. Good. Now she also says that she's felt very, very strongly against any th crimes of humanity. Why is she so sensitive to this? I'm connected to Gaia. Mm -hmm. Earth is connected to the rainbow planet. In what way? Vibrationally and through light. Mm -hmm. Through the spectrum, through crystals that are living in the earth. Do these crystals connect both planets? Yes. Mm -hmm. So why is it that Fermi feels so sensitive? What is she actually feeling? People's sadness and people's unknowing. To who they really are. Mm -hmm. So what can she do about this sadness without getting herself drawn into it? <clears throat> Create her art. Mm -hmm. So she needs to focus on her heart, her art, not on the suffering. Mm -hmm. So by focusing on one's art, focusing on the positive, does that help balance out all of that pain and suffering? It does. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so she needs to continue her art. Yes, mm -hmm. and not have fear. Mm -hmm. But it's not happening quick enough. Be patient. Be patient. Good. Another thing that she needs to be patient about is her circumstances in life. She feels that she's lacking in abundance. She recently quit her job. Her lungs shut down, wreaking havoc on her health. She wants to do something to contribute to society. But sometimes she has this fear in her life that it won't turn out, that she's going to end up groveling and begging people to help her. Why is that? I tap into the fear of the sadness of the people that aren't cared for. And I have a hard time putting that in a place where it doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where we can put that sadness to where it will not affect for My me. art. Mm -hmm. oh. So now that we know that she needs to use her art, we don't want to be putting sadness into her heart because we know that when she does her artwork, the way she feels is transmitted into that art. Mm. So what can she do with her art to transform that sadness instead of transmitting it? When people look at my art, 
they will swim in the color. It will awaken something in them, a remembrance to how to be kind and loving to themselves, to everyone they meet. So when she puts her sadness in that art, will it transform it from yes. her? It's a transform into happiness. Mm -hmm. So what do we do now with this mindset of lack? I need to bury it in the ocean, mm -hmm. actually the sand. All right, so I'd like for you to give for me, a picture of what she's going to be doing with that sadness right now. What should we do with that sadness? She's a cat encapsulating it in a heart. Mm -hmm. She has a shovel and she's digging out the sand. I'm at McKenna Beach. Second entrance. I've put the heart all the fear, all the sadness of the world and myself there. Mm, very good. And what will Gaia do with this sadness? She will transmute it into love. I just buried a love. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful feeling. Now she wants to make a difference and she wants to be able to manifest $80 million so that she can create her foundation to assist the earth by helping the environment, animals, and the people and communities all around the world. Where is she going with her book, her art, the foundation? How she, can she manifest this? Faith. Mm -hmm. People are going to show up to assist her to achieving everything that she needs. Her art. I can't say enough about her art. So she cannot stop doing her art. <sighs> yes. And through the people meeting through their art, she will share other wisdoms that will help mm -hmm. to care for themselves so that the awakening of themselves can happen. The awakening of the peace of them to mm -hmm. who they really are. So through their, her art and her book, they will be able to transform themselves? Is that the idea? <coughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Can you tell me a little bit about this blue ultraviolet light that she sees in the morning? The light green light, the golden red light, the pure golden light, and the white light. Who are these beings? They're my friends from my rainbow planet. Mm. They're my protectors. They're my reminders. Mm -hmm. What are they reminding her of? That she's never been alone and, and that she's been protected. And this is her homing device. Mm. <gasps> oh. So when she sees these lights, that connects her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Reminds her of her place at home. So these beings that came to her this year, this beautiful woman with the long white hair, the white robe and golden light body, who was she?
My master guide. Her master guide. Does she have a name? Lila. Lila. Is Lila always with? With her when she is doing her art? Or is she always with her? She's always with her. Mm -hmm. What does Lila have to say today? What message does she have for her? I'm with you. Don't you ever, ever worry. Lila, she worries about money. She worries about lack. What would you like to tell her? She's silly. <laughs> <laughs> she says you giggled at her before about money. Lila, tell her what money really is. What is money? It's God energy. Mm -hmm. Why do some have more than others? Soul contracts. Mm -hmm. So some can feel that energy more than others? Can attract it to them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what about Fermi? Can she attract that money? Yes. Good. Is there anything that she needs to do to open her up to receiving it? Allowing it to come to her? Faith and don't stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this foundation that she wants to create is a very mm. important one for the earth, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that part of her mission here? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So those beings that she saw with you, who are they? She says the whole room filled up with them. Fifty or sixty beings, all wearing these golden light bodies and white robes. Who are they? Protectors. Protectors. She's quite a, got quite an army of protectors. <sighs> How am I grateful for them? Mm -hmm. Do they come from the Rainbow Planet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did they protect the Queen on the Rainbow yes, Planet? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Oh. So how do they feel about their Queen? They're so thrilled that she rem that they remember that I remember them mm -hmm. that I didn't forget when I had to come down here mm -hmm. to beautiful Earth with a mission of love. Did she, did Arya request these protectors, or did they volunteer to come with her? They wanted to come join. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, why did she choose the island of Maui? Was she a Lemurian in her lifetime? Or is there something here? Yes, mm -hmm. I was a Lemurian here. Mm -hmm. And I was called back. This is why Maui keeps me here. Mm -hmm. To give it love, to help the remembrance to help the vibration. So would you show her that lifetime now? 
What was she doing in that lifetime in Lemuria? I was a frequency holder. Frequency holder. And I would stay in, well, I would live similar to the rainbow planet, white crystalline building. And I would be there, holding the frequency. And again, people would come mm -hmm. to gain the frequency, to help their frequencies to get raised. So she really recreated her lifetime on the Moria, the same as the Rainbow Planet. <laughs> she sure did. Mm -hmm. So what happened to her in that lifetime? I witnessed the destruction of it, mm -hmm. or the how it crumbled, and I was the light beam that us Lemurians could leave into the next dimension. Mm -hmm. Did she make a vow to come back to Earth? Did she make any contracts? Because seeing something destroy that she loved so much, I would imagine she wouldn't have felt very happy about this. She did want to come back to make sure that it could be that life on Gaia could be once again beautiful like it was mm -hmm. in the Lemurian time. This is why she came back. Mm -hmm. at this time. So what energy does Maui hold? What energy does all of the Hawaiian Islands hold that's so important? The essence of the Polynesians mm -hmm. and how they loved the earth and the stars and nature, and so because it's still perpetuated here, it can vibrate to the rest of the planet. Mm -hmm. This is why everybody wants to come here to the Hawaiian Islands. We chant here, we pray, the hula dancers, the kahunas, we care. And how does that help the planet? It's like a, a peach cloud that surrounds the earth mm. just for a moment. And people get glimpses of it and then they go back mm -hmm. to their reality. So it helps. Absolutely. Very this is, good. This is why people come to islands in general. Mm -hmm. But Maui in particular, because it has the Crystal Palace in Aleakala. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell Fermi about that? Her role at this time in Maui and the awakening. This is why it keeps me here. To engage in the people that come here who need to have peace, to have awakenment, to have a change of perspective. She's here to help maintain that frequency So people have a place of refuge to come. Mm -hmm. This is like a, a reset button living here on Hawaii. 
especially Maui, this is why people come here to reset. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm here to help with the reset. When I engage in people, share them my wisdom, share them my art, it is awakening them on some level to their self-love. Wonderful. Thank you. Has Fermi fulfilled all of her soul contracts in this lifetime? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do you see her doing in the future now with relationships now that she doesn't have any contracts? do what she really came here to do, is to give love, create, to be at peace, and to remember, now that I remember, mm -hmm. all can happen for her. Can she still connect to that rainbow planet? <sighs> yes, she's connected now. Mm -hmm. Does she visit this place in her dreams? Yes. Mm -hmm. Meditations, too. How does that help her to connect? It feeds me mm -hmm. so that I can be of high vibration here. Very good. Let's talk about her cat now. He said she had a good connection before with a cat that's no longer here, but why? Why does Messy have messy habits? Is it perhaps his name? I did think that too. <laughs> it's his eyesight. It's his eyesight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He fell when he was a kitten off of the balcony. Mm -hmm. And it somehow shook something in his retina. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so he needs to have his scent to make sure he knows that he's loved and wanted yeah. in our home. Oh, Messy. So let's connect with Messy now. Let's see what Messy would like to say to Fermi. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, I'll tap your forehead and let's connect with Messy. One, two, and three. Good morning, Messy. Hi. Messy, it seems to me that you're having some accidents. Did you know that? Yes. Why is that messy? Because I'm scared. Why are you so scared? I was lost. Mm hmm. Are you still lost, Messy? No. No. Do you know that your mom and dad love you? Yeah. Mm hmm. So why are you still scared? My eyes are mm. not the greatest. I, mm. The shadows, they scare me sometimes. Mm -hmm. When they scare you, what do you do? I back away and then I want to pee in the house somewhere. Mm -hmm. What does the peeing mean to you? What does that do for you? Makes me feel strong. Mm. What else would make you feel strong instead of peeing, Messy? Knowing he's love. Mm-hmm. So, Messy, it seems to me that when you see these shadows, kittens and cats see shadows all the time, don't they? Even when their eyesight is well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's part of their senses. What would you like to do in the future when you see these shadows, when you feel scared? Instead of peeing, what would you like instead? How would you like to show that you're strong enough? Going up to the object. Mm-hmm. And facing the fear. Very good. So, Messy, what color are you? I'm purple. You're purple. Very good. Now, purple is a very regal color, isn't it? 
Sure is. Mm -hmm. And even though you're a cat, I want you to see yourself as one of those regal, cat-like beings that has all the power. These feline beings are very powerful. And they don't show their fear by peeing. They show their fear by facing it. Are you ready to face now your fears? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to see messy in your, in your mind's eye, something that you're very afraid of. What are you afraid of? The dark. The dark. The big, big black dark. The big black dark. Mm -hmm. So now, I'd like for you, Messy, to turn on that part of your senses that you haven't been relying on. The part of your senses that could see in the dark. This is your spiritual senses. And I'd like for you to turn those on so that you can see very clearly in the dark. Because that's what cats do. They can see in the dark. It has nothing to do with your eyesight, but all with your senses. So let's turn that on. And as you turn on that light within you, that sense, take a look at that dark and see what's in it. There's nothing there. Nothing there. So what do you do instead? What can you do instead of being afraid? I can know that I'm strong and that I'm loved. And that's right. And you could just curl up, and you can purr, and you can go back to sleep. Hmm. Isn't that a good feeling? Hmm, most definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what would you like to tell your mom now? Now that she understands that you just didn't know how to use your senses. I'm sorry for peeing all over, and I love you. Mm, very good. Very good. So let's now take a deep breath in, and let me now affirm me speak to Messy. Messy, what would you like to tell Messy? You're my little love nugget. You have nothing to fear. You are loved and safe. My precious kitty. Very good. So let's take a deep breath in and let me now connect again with that higher self. We've answered all of Fermi's questions today. Why did you bring her here to this session? What did you want her to know? She's always been in contact with her higher self. Mm -hmm. She just didn't know it. How can she determine or discern which is her higher self and which is her ego? When she asks herself the questions mm -hmm. that she has an issue with or wants clarity with, wait and listen and the answers always do come to her. Mm -hmm. So she knows what her higher self sounds like. She's just been impatient? She does, and I think it was the not knowing and the unsure of is the higher voice that she was hearing, mm -hmm. was it hers or was it just her imagination? Because she was not, the amnesia was so great mm -hmm. when she came into this planet that she just had to remember so now that she understands that she was this queen, Arya, from this planet, now that she has full understanding and recollection of her mission here, how do you imagine her life will be now that she can tap in to that information? She can tap into the wisdom that she's always been able to access to help others, understanding that she is always guided by her guides and protectors. How do you see her life changing now? 
she's going to blossom now. Mm -hmm. She has all the information that she needs now. She just needs to trust. So when she thinks about not having enough money, what would you like to tell her? It's a joke. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. It's just a program that the world tries to make people believe. Mm -hmm. She'll always have enough. More than enough. Very good. So now that we've answered her questions, let's do a scan on her body and let's see if there's anything that we need to address in the body today. Take a look at her lungs. The bladder. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the bladder? It distends sometimes. Mm -hmm. What's causing that? I was told it's a magnesium deficiency, mm -hmm. but I feel it came from my aunt. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to look at her bladder and see if there's any any attachment, any energy that's attached to her bladder. You'll be able to see it like a cord, something anchored in. I just feel anger. Mm hmm So this anger that's connected between her aunt and her, how is it affecting her? What's it doing to the bladder? Is it inflaming it? It's not supported. It's not supported. So what can we do now to dissolve this energy of anger? What can we use to bring her bladder back to health? Source. Mm -hmm. White light. Very good. So I'd like for you now to begin beaming that white light into her body, into her bladder, dissolving this connection. And as you fill her bladder with this white light, I'd like for you to now follow that cord connecting her aunt and her. Allow that white light to travel through that cord right back into the heart of her aunt. Transmuting, transforming that anger into love. And as it reaches her, go ahead and dissolve that connection. <sighs> and tell me what her bladder looks like now. There's love in there. Beautiful. Very good. Keep scanning her body and see if there's anything else that we need to address today with her body. She has fear in her right hip. Mm -hmm. What's causing that? What's the origin of that? She was in a car accident at 16. Mm -hmm. She thought she was going to die. All right. So let's find out what's that fear manifesting in, take a look at it and tell me what it looks like. Looks like a shoelace that's full of nuts. Mm -hmm. Like yarn, just knotted up. Did she create this? It came from the accident. Mm -hmm. Let's find out how it was put in there. Who put that in there?
the driver. The driver. Did she accept this into her own body from the driver? Did she take that fear from the driver? Yes. Mm -hmm. He didn't want, he was scared. Mm -hmm. Because he knew he was driving too fast and that his parents would be upset. So did she, did she take that from him in order to alleviate his burden of fear? No, she felt his fear. Okay. Does she need to feel his fear anymore? No. Now that she understands why she put that in there. Yes. Very good. So what can we use today to dissolve that shoelace with the knots in it? Selenite. Very good. So go ahead and begin using the selenite to dissolve it. And tell me when you're done. Mm -hmm. It's done. Very good. And now I'd like for you to continue through her body and tell me if there's anything else in her body that needs attention today. No, everything is okay. Very good. Is there anything else that you would like to address with Fermi today? Or anyone else? Or are we complete? She is so thankful to have met you. It feels that we've met before, mm -hmm. Alba. Let's find out where. Let's go back in time and find out where we have met before. South America, my Bolivian sisters. Mm hmm What year is that? Nineteen twenty? Mm hmm See us just walking the streets. Mm -hmm. Just smiling at each other, having a good time. Very good. So she understands now the connection. Hmm. When I saw your face, the picture that you have on your website, I thought I saw part of me in there. Mm -hmm. <gasps> The eyes, the smile. And why is that, that one sees one each other in a picture? It's the remembrance. Mm -hmm. That good. we've had, that we've met before at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now that we have that information, are we complete? Yes, we are complete. Very good. Wide awake, feeling wonderful all over. <sighs> Welcome back. You did fabulous. Wow. The... Are things... Hola, chica. <laughs> are, are things crystal clear to you now? It should be. <sighs> it should be very clear. They are. Mm -hmm. And I was having... Switch these. Mm -hmm. You were hovering? It's like I was having these... My journey that I went through with you. Mm -hmm. I was having these little moments this whole week. Mm -hmm. So bizarre. And you were already being prepped for your journey. Yeah, and I just thought, oh, that's just the conscious mind telling mm -hmm. me, no, that's just... 
you, all those books you read, all those TV shows. Yeah. But this was different, wasn't it? Completely. You saw yourself. And I would see that dress often, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, stop. My that? conscious mind was like, no, just stop. Yeah. Stop thinking about that. But it kept on coming up and up and up. And part of me almost thought like, again, it's like, is it made mm -hmm. up? But it really isn't. How could it not? And the more that I would feel that solar plexus to answer mm -hmm. the question because mm -hmm. this That's is what I've done before like mm -hmm. with my art when I ask myself why am I obsessed what gives why can't I just well, let it go and then I would hear this is very important it is your artwork is how you channel <laughs> you're channeling through your artwork so you have to continue this is your main purpose here it took you long enough it really did but it's going to open up doors for you so you have to continue channeling this love and the more you listen to this recording, the more you'll understand that this is your purpose here. And everything that you endured through your whole lifetime was just experience. It was just for you to be able to empathize with other people. Does it make sense? Totally. Mm -hmm. How would you know to empathize with someone if you hadn't lived it yourself? I know. But you know how they always say, oh, you can learn by example. No, you can't. Right? You cannot, no matter how much I think parents say this often, learn from my examples. Well, no, no, I want to try it. That's why kids put their fingers in the fire, because they have to know how hot it is. <laughs> so how long do you think this journey was for you? It only felt like 25, 30 minutes. Mm. We were at a, right now we're at an hour and 15 minutes. We actually stopped at 111, but we stopped at 111. What, 11, 11, yeah. It was See, 1, 1, 1. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was great. God, yeah, it only felt like a half hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how it happened. Is this something you want to keep private? You want to share this? I'll share it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. think this will help others? Maybe. Yeah. You got some regal blood in you there, or not blood, <laughs> energy. <laughs> My foundation for me to you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's it. Hi. Fantastic. Mm. Marvelous session. So tell everybody how you felt about this session. How did it go for you? It was like opening up a book about <laughs> myself. And it was the remembrance of, oh, we all have this information talking mm. to us, but it's like we're yeah. blinded to it. And, and it was pretty wild. I mean, the pastels... I mean, you started off looking at these women. Were these women from your planet? Or just, it was just an introductory to... It, the introductory, it's a painting that I've seen before. Uh, it's a famous pastel. Pa pastel painting. Yes. And then you went on to where you really were from, and yeah. you saw yourself in that beautiful, beautiful dress, mm -hmm. and people coming to you. And that's really what they're still doing mm -hmm. to you. They are. People are still coming to you for information. Mm -hmm. You've been in a, a role throughout all your life really giving information just like you did before yes. so it didn't matter what you were doing not really so do you understand now that no matter what you're doing you're still going to be doing the same thing now i do <laughs> it's like thank you because the yeah. circles of what it's that's like why you came here. sometimes that's yes. how you do it that's how you do it so was this a good experience most definitely yeah you recommend it to other people everybody i waited eight months <laughs> it was worth the wait so how did it feel to be in hypnosis it felt like coming home to myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a friend you knew that you knew all along. Mm -hmm. Now you felt. you <clears throat> meditate a lot. How did this compare to meditation? It was similar, but having your voice, mm -hmm. your voice, it helped it even more to to broaden the perspective. To guide you, yes, mm -hmm. and because sometimes when it's just myself. I think we just stay limited. Yeah. So I find your voice and your questions, the probing, really help to mm -hmm. expand and have everything present yeah. itself more clearly. So if you if you do meditate, this is something that's uh, you know that's what we're told in almost all of our sessions is to meditate so that you can find center yourself, and then when you are in hypnosis, we just continue going. So right now we are in. We are in Maui, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a beautiful day outside, and um, we've come, come a long way. And I do travel all around the world. You can sign up for my newsletter 
going by uh, going to albawyman.com go to the out of town page sign up there and that's how you get a, an appointment with me and uh, is that how you got yours yes I went to her website mm -hmm. and I was gonna travel I was gonna go into <laughs> debt I will travel the world to see her and she came to me Isn't a mile it? and a half away so how is that for a divine unbelievable I mean unbelievable. it was yeah I saw up when I made the appointment I cried I said, and that's Thank you and that's why I travel <laughs> I travel so that I can reach people rather than them come to me. And uh, I get to meet fabulous people. And I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, until next time, bye. <laughs> bye. Mm, elbow. Mm.